All right, welcome back. This is the escape course with Dr. VG. We are on lesson three. We're talking about bias this week, and we actually have a lot to talk about. So let's hop to it. you back this is the escape course with dr. VG so let's get to talking about a lot of things that I said that we were going to talk about uh, in previous courses or in previous lessons so now we're going to actually have the opportunity to talk about that stuff today so let's go out to our course syllabus and scroll down to the bottom going into bias let's take a look at our week outline again if remembering if you're actually inside of a formal setting, you can go through and follow the outline. Uh, what, would he, what do we have here? We're looking at uh, what? We have one, two, three, I believe four activities that we're going to be looking at this particular week. So you have opportunity to talk amongst yourselves. That's always going to be good. That's always fun. I like that. Uh, we have um, lots of terms and definitions that we'll be going through, lots of examples, so on and so forth. We move into our step for critical analysis of bias. We have an example where we talk about uh, that as well. You're going to have, towards the end, you do have stuff here in our to-dos. Let's go, go back, take a look at our lesson to-dos for this particular week. Uh, as we can see, we're talking about inclusivity, exclusion, assimilation, integration. We have our four group activities listed up there. You have assignment three up on <coughs> our course management system. And then, of course, you're moving into simple complexity next week or yes, next lesson when we actually start to move in correlation. All right. So that's what we're actually taking a look at now. Uh, let's go ahead and get back into it and move straight away into our presentation for today as we are greeted right away with a series of uh, terms and definitions. All right, so some of the first things we're looking at here, we're looking at homogenous. Uh, it's going to be a sameness, um, something similar. Heterogeneous, we're looking at mixture. I mean, there's a mixture of things. They're diverse. Diversity composed of parts with different attributes, um, inclusivity, open for everyone to participate. And then, of course, our last one here, exclusivity, where we're looking at restricted participation. So let's take a look at some of what these terms are talking about. We'll move with homogenous and heterogeneous. I mean, we're looking at, when you're looking at and calling things homogenous, you're talking about their being similar. I mean, they all look alike, they might feel alike, they might seem alike, so on and so forth, where heterogeneous are, are going to be things that are different. <laughs> An example of what we're talking about here, uh, this is 2021, but we have been stuck inside of a pandemic for quite a while now. We're all at home, we don't really go out to restaurants anymore, so on and so forth, so we've had to well we've had to do the best we can with our meal plans our menus i mean i don't know how many people out there roll with new meals every week i mean you can explore some things all right so here's what my daughter says my daughter looks at the things that we're saying there and say oh you're making this again i tell her this i say i mean come on Kyle, what, what, what's wrong with what I, what I made she said, oh, we just had this. I said, no, we had this two days ago. And now we're having it again because I have leftovers. I said, oh, but this is what we always eat. I mean, I'd like some, I'd like difference. I like change. You know, that's cool. I, I like that. I like that, especially 
especially in a child when they're saying, I want to try something different. But here's the catch. <laughs> As some parents out there would already know, the catch is, hey, you can, I can introduce new food, but you just got to have that different taste now. Because <laughs> the whole reason why we have this homogenous menu is because that's the only food that you eat. <laughs> you got to try something new. Try something new. Then you'll be good. Then we can have all kinds of stuff. Then you don't have to eat the same thing. <laughs> three days in a row. God, I'll make it three days in a row. But that's what she sees it as. <sighs> you go through life. You see things that look alike. You, you We talk about their homogenous uh, structure. And uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind is that things are different. Um, it's not always... Uh, homogenous. It's not always heterogeneous. I mean, it just isn't like that all the time. It might seem that way, but there are differences, and you have to be able to identify what that is. All right. Um, uh, with the diversity, uh, you're moving there, composed of parts with different attributes. Look, now, diversity is a term that it took on, it's really taken on different meanings now. I mean, while some of these topics I talk about in, let's say, you would find traditional diversity classes, you've had, in a way, a backlash against that word when we bring in diversity. Diversity training, diversity this, diversity that. Oh, uh, we're bringing in all this diverse stuff. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this because that's how we live our lives. I mean, I look outside, I see diverse lot yards. I mean, I see diverse cars. I see all kinds of things. I do have a... Hmm, I mean, you might be looking at me in these these videos, and I, I pretty much dress the same, but uh, I do have a diverse wardrobe. And so diversity isn't bad. It's what we're actually talking about. There's a context for it. And uh, a lot of the pushback I've been seeing and experiencing over the past, I'd say maybe decade, has been when we're using diversity in the context of human relations, um, jobs, um, uh, uh, groups, affiliations, those kinds of things. And it's, it really is tacked on to a push for what else were look, these other two terms that we're actually talking about? It's really a push for more inclusion, all right? That's what it really comes down to. I mean, we're, in, we're introducing diverse because, you know, you frequently hear about we want a diverse workforce. Well, what does that actually mean? I mean, truly, what does that actually mean? Um, <clears throat> I remember I was running a, a, a session. We were running a session in my diversity class, and it was a tag team. And so I handled things really from a perspective point of view. Uh, the person I did it with, she, uh, she was a, a therapist, right? She was a counselor at the school. So she handled things from an emphatic point of view. She addressed feeling. I addressed perspective. So we kind of we kind of played off each other. But there was little little light between us. Uh, we were for all intents and purposes allies. Um we we agreed, but we did that to and not to allow other people to talk. So nevertheless, we we were starting this one evening and everybody was coming in. It was a larger session than, than normal. At least about 30 people. And so we were coming in, we're sitting up front, and we're just chitting, chatting, and we're, we're looking at everybody take their seats and all, and we're saying, oh my gosh, there's so much diversity. We're going to have so much fun. Oh, we were so excited. So nevertheless, we finally get up. I'm start, I, I introduce it. I start talking, and, and uh, I was like, yes, we noticed there's so much diversity in this class. We're going to have so much fun. And a guy was sitting there and says, I take great offense to what you just stated. And we were like, take it, take it aback. And I like, well, what, what, what do you mean? He says, what I hear is that you just looked at us in a superficial way. You looked across all these things, all these people, and 
You just made a determination because you might see a black guy here, a woman over there, an older gentleman across the way, and that's you define that as being diverse. And you know what? What he was talking about, and someone else right next to him, she said, I agree. She said, I mean, you don't know anything about my background. And they were absolutely right. Because we did. We looked. We used our eyes. And I, we went to explain why we had said this. But we did jump to conclusions. Because to be perfectly honest with you, there's age there's upbringing, there was uh, uh, educational level, there was the diversity of, of the, the courses that people taught there, there was different living arrangements, different living places. I mean, there are all kinds of things that make people diverse. And what we did was take a superficial survey of what we could observe with our eyes and while that's not necessarily a bad thing, because that, that is what we have eyes for. I mean, eyes are used for that. Um, it takes a bit more effort to look underneath. It does. And to be perfectly honest with you, you won't always see it. I remember something else. There was an article we were looking at, and somebody was talking about something that came up in our, our, our seminars. Uh, we were looking at a boardroom. All white men, blonde hair, blue eyed. And they were like, oh, there's no diversity here. We need to add more people. We need to bring in some women. We need to bring in, yeah, you should have some women there. Uh, but there was no diversity. It's just a bunch of homogenous mixture of, of, of men. They all look alike. All right, so superficially, yeah. I mean, but you know, in this particular instance, they had no idea that there were a couple gay men who were actually on the board. There are mean. There are men there who might not have had the same type of upbringing. There are men there who might have been in different classes completely. Um, and I'm talking about financial classes. So I mean, it, even though you might look at this and see, uh, it just looks all the same. They can't possibly be ha They can't possibly have any idea other than than whatever they whatever. There can always be something else there. And we must be cognizant of that as we go about our lives, looking at things. Uh, they might be all the same, but I, I do believe you might find some difference inside of there once you dig a little deeper, once you identify and accept that that could actually be. And so I stated there that, my pe that uh, there are times and contexts when people look at you know, diversity in a negative light, but to be honest with you, we really do welcome it. To be honest, we do. I remember my kids, they were growing up. Uh, my wife at the time, if you, because we're in the middle of a pandemic and everybody's talking about vaccines, there was a vaccine for kids. I mean, I say was, there is. Um, if you haven't caught the chicken pox already, well, then there's a chicken pox vaccine. That was relatively new when my kids were growing up. So it was, yeah, it, it was new. Not everybody knew about it. Not everybody was comfortable with it, so on and so forth. But the chicken pox was always something that it's a pain in the neck. I mean, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking oatmeal baths and, and kids scratching and, and itching and, and breaking skin. I mean, there was, it, it's a mess. It's just a mess and it lasts for so long, right? And you look at that and it's the children, they feel bad. I think there are even fevers associated with it. They're in pain. So I remember it's one thing to have, especially if you have three kids, it's one thing to have one kid catch it, right? I mean, so that's two weeks of, of life on hold dealing with this. Uh... <laughs> But what if your other kids don't catch it yet? And now uh, you deal with two weeks of this, of handling this. I've burned through my vacation at work. Uh, now we have these other ones who catch it a month later. Vacation's gone. And now we have to run through this process all over again. So I remember 
there were there were moms who got together and wanted to have chicken pox parties. Now I don't I'm not going to speak to I'm not going to speak to the, the the validity of having a party to get all kids together and get them all infected at the same time so that we can handle it a bit. I mean, I understand the concept behind it. I understand why people did it. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, you're just, I just got to feel weird. I felt weird about it when, when it was suggested to us because, I mean, you're just inviting pain to your children. And you don't really want that uh, so nevertheless, that was one approach. And the reason why that was done is because we knew it was coming. I mean, as parents, we knew that the, we know that this world can be a messy, complex place. It can be. Uh, our, our immune systems are built from uh, uh, exposure. All right. I mean, as people are out there. We, they, we, we had... So there were seven kids growing up in this household. The first few kids, you know, they, they spit their passy out and they spit it right on the floor, right? Uh, yeah, I was, I was darn near boiling those things at first. I did. You know, yeah, that thing touched the floor. It's nasty. By the time I got to the third kid, uh, I didn't care. Did you spit it out on carpet? Oh, if you spot it out on, on, on a wood floor, well, good. Spit it outside in the dirt. Well, I might, uh, I don't know. So nasty. I might spit on it and brush it off. Give it back. Right in the mouth. <laughs> but there are people out there who say, just let the kids go out. We go out and do all of these vaccines. I'm not against vaccines. Believe it. I believe in vaccination because it's good for society. Uh, we do live together, for heaven's sakes. You, you got to do what you need to do for your fellow human. And so the idea behind vaccination, for me as a scientist, is sound. That is what it is. Uh, I live with other people. And so there's a price I need to pay if I'm going to live with you. So, I mean, but, I mean, we, the, the, the argument was, do you protect your child from getting sick and, and the five second rule? I mean, if you spit that and they're sucking on that lollipop and it falls to the ground, right? And it's on this carpet right here. Uh, I'll pick it up. Yeah, there might be some carpet fibers on it, but I ain't sucking it. Kids <laughs> sucking on the thing. But if you're outside and you have that lollipop, it's a blow pop, right? Because you know you want the bubble gum in the middle. You suck it on that blow pop and that thing falls out. Perhaps if you can reach and catch that thing before it hits the ground. I mean, I don't know. Is that like a, a half second rule? I mean, it, it, it flew through the air. It might even been spinning. And you catch the thing. I mean, that's awesome. It was like, 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 like James Bond or, or some kind of mutant speed. I'm thinking that's pretty good. It is. I'm thinking it's pretty good. You don't need to worry about five second rules, three seconds. Who cares? <sighs> The reason I bring that up, the reason I even talk about it is because we, as humans, living creatures on this place, with the abundance of life that we actually have, we need exposure to stuff. We need exposure to germs. When I started teaching at uh, college, the first two years, they told me, oh, you're going to be so sick. Yeah, I was broken. <laughs> I got sick so much because I, my body had to get used to it. I mean, and we had a lot of students coming in and out. And I'm in, I was teaching in, in uh, computer security courses. So I have students coming in, touching keyboards, sneezing, and then touching keyboards again. And then, hey doc, can you come here and see what I, I did wrong? Hey, you can control my, my, my keyboard and computer. No, nah, that's all right, man. You, you go ahead and, and Take control of your stuff and show me what you need to show me on your screen. Uh, right? I mean, I'm 45 and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done trying to, t trying to take on new germs and build up defenses. Those days are over. Give me some Advil. That's, that's kind of what I, I, I'm saying nowadays. But nevertheless, it's the diversity. We need it. It is required. We are living here. There are things about diversity which makes us stronger. 
Okay? When you don't have it, you're, for all intents and purposes, weaker. You're more subject to, you're more subject to threats that might be coming on our horizon because you aren't strong enough to withstand it now. That's what diversity gives us. Diversity gives us the ability to be able to withstand that which we could not have imagined might be coming. All right? We have a better chance of handling it. And we only get stronger. The catch is diversity brings, make sure, diversity brings discord. Yeah, fever dog is say, I don't want to hear you say that, Doc. No, it does. It does. You have to accept it. You have to roll with it. It brings discord. And what do I mean by that? Diversity is difference, right? I mean, I'm different. If I catch a new cold, I'm different. And here's what's going to happen. When I catch that cold, my body's getting new, new defenses. It's learning stuff. You want to know what's happening to me? It sucks. <laughs> yes, it does. Because now I have a fever. Now my, I have aches and pains. I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay back on the couch all day long. Uh, there's discord. And some of it is painful. But that's the price of development. Mm, growing isn't necessarily pain free. I mean, there's a pain that goes along with it. And from that comes strength. Uh, that applies here dealing with humans as well. So it's not just a diverse, uh, diversity of, of new pathogens and building up my, my, my immune system as a result of it. Um, it's also the diversity of our society, right? Some people say, oh, multiculturalism has failed. No, 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 no. You go, you're going to have to accept the fact that there is going to be some discord that goes along with it, but you most certainly are becoming stronger as a result of it. Never forget that. Never forget it, because that's always the case. Okay, that brings us to the first of our activities. We're looking here at four standing corners of diversity. So, right, four standing corners. The whole point of what this thing is, you know, sometimes you go to seminars, sitting in classes, you're just sitting there, right? You're sitting there for, I don't know, it could be two, three hours. Listen to somebody just, that's all they do, they're just talking. They might throw some pictures up there, but uh, at some point you want to get up and move. Uh, there might be a bathroom break here and there. That's what this actual activity is actually uh, stems from. I mean, if you're in a room, so on and so forth, it gets people mingling. Uh, that's what you humans, we humans like to do. We like to talk, get up, might see somebody over there. I, I think I might want to talk to. <laughs> all right? Here's the opportunity. That's what that, that's, what that's all about. I believe in that kind of thing. So... Um, if there were corners that, that inside of a room, just think of it that way. You're all, you're, you're on your own. Just imagine homogenous, inclusive, homogenous, exclusive, heterogeneous, inclusive, heterogeneous, exclusive. What are we actually talking about here? Uh, things that are all the same and, and, but require or are allowing everything in, uh, things that are, um, all the same, but doesn't want anything else. Oh, I don't want mixture. I want it to look just like this always. Uh, take Taking those four categories and thinking about what these things are, right? A passenger rail service. Uh, talk about trains. I rode on a train, not subways. Uh, we went on an Amtrak train down to Texas. That was so much fun. I don't know anybody out there. I mean, we're this. I live here in the United States, so we we believe in cars. And yeah, with with seven kids, we had all kinds of cars. Too many cars, and, and the neighbors complain. They're like, it's like a canyon out there in our streets. We can't see the sidewalk because they have so many cars around their house. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Street is free. They're going to park because that's what they do. But... We do have trains from time to time. We just don't spend, as a country, we don't spend a whole lot of money on them. Uh, but they are fun. They are fun. If you get an opportunity to ride on a train, I, I, I encourage it. <clears throat> um, so passenger rail service, you find all kinds of things. There are all kinds of stops. Stops I didn't know existed for trains. <laughs> the, the stuff, yeah, I just didn't know. 
Stop it in the middle of the night. You get all kinds of people coming on. Um, what In what category would that be? Heterogeneous, inclusive, so on and so forth. A class more public university. We talk about that. We do. We talk about how our universities are. Uh, um, we Nowadays, we like to talk about inclusion. Everything is inclusion inside of our classrooms. We like to include. So, yeah, it's one thing to be able to say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm over here. I kind of want you to. Look at me, listen to what I have to say. Yeah, that's cool. That's one type of inclusion. We like to say, yes, we include everyone and their point of view. Um, does everybody feel that happens? Not necessarily. It depends on classes. I mean, that's why we had our, our diversity in education courses at my particular college, because it was, it was getting faculty on board with what inclusion actually meant. Just so we're, we're, we're practicing a bit more fairness in education. Uh, but uh, you have to keep in mind, I mean, is it truly inclusive? Yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes. But here's what I can say. With a certainty, with a certainty that borders on the absolute, every person sitting in that classroom, I can say there, yeah, they're included in this class for all intents and purposes, there might be some restrictions for enrollments and stuff like that, but it was exclusive to everyone paying for it. You understand? So we can talk about inclusion all we like. It's not truly open to everybody. It's open to people with the money to pay for it. I mean, this is, I mean, it's, that's the way our society works. You got to have cash in this place. I'm not saying that's the right way of doing things. I'm not saying it's the wrong way of doing things. I'm saying today that's how our system works. So there is inclusion to, but there are limits with regards to some of those types of things. The IT industry. Uh, some people have said, yeah, it's very, everybody can go into the IT industry. We have a big issue with, with women in the IT industry. We've tried to get women into IT for a long time. I mean, it's, there is a disparity in that particular place. And there are multiple reasons as to why there might have been a disparity or why people perceive there to be a disparity. Um, golf course, right? I've never gone golfing. I haven't. I'll do putt-putt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, out here in Wisconsin, we have this place called the Wisconsin Dells. And I love going there during the summertime because it's so much fun. Um, at least before the pandemic. So, but I do want to go back. I want to go back because it's, it's just great. And we always go there and we do the, the, the mini golf and stuff like that. But I've never gone to play golf, right? I mean, there is, there are, <laughs> there are exclusions there. I, I, I mentioned that money thing. Yeah, you need money and you need clubs. I don't have clubs. As far as I know, clubs are expensive, just playing golf is expensive. And then you got to have the golf stuff to go along with it. I mean, I, I've known people who give individual clubs as presents at Christmas time or something like that. I, I, I think those things are expensive. I just think they are. Because, but you got to think about it. Do they allow anybody to just roll onto that golf course? No. If you're going to be there and you're going to pay the money and you have golf clubs and you know how to play and you're not going to be smashing through windows, well, then they'll let you play. And it's, and it's a great thing because it's beautiful. I've never seen an ugly looking golf course. I just have it. Maybe they exist. I personally haven't seen them. Um, so there is in, uh, uh, exclusivity in that particular space, but there's inclusion as well. So a sidewalk, upper class gated residential community. I'll put that one as a red herring. <laughs> All right. I mean, you look at that and say, well, that just screams exclusion. Well, depending on how you look at it, I mean, it, it does. So I put these things up here so that you can talk about it, explore amongst yourselves, define where you see inclusion and exclusion with them, define where you see there, there might be homogenous and heterogeneous content, and uh, discuss amongst yourselves. And then we will move on with the rest of our presentation.